Today on the Road Hard Roadhouse, we're changing the oil in a 2002 F350 V10 6.8 liter gas motor. So this is going to work the same on all F250s and F350s from 1999 all the way to 2016 minimum. So this is what we're doing today. Let's get it started. you're going to be needing today is a Motorcraft oil filter part number FL820S. Now the reason why I'm using a Motorcraft filter is because this is what everybody recommends. They say that this some things you just don't go away from Motorcraft or Ford whatever you want to call it and this is one of them so that's what I'm going with this today. As far as the oil, I'm using Mobile One 5W30. I have had extreme good luck on almost every ride that I've had using Mobile One. So I'm going to try it out in this truck. Now the reason why we are changing the oil in this big old beast is first because I just bought it and the motor that's in it, I don't know anything about. So I'm going to go ahead and change the oil and this is a good idea. If you buy a new vehicle, change the oil in it. They may have told you that they changed the oil in it, but maybe they haven't. So you probably need to change your oil, regardless of whether or not they said they just then just did it or not. One thing I'm going to start doing that I haven't done before on the Road Hard Roadhouse is or in general in my life, so I'm going to start putting a date on it. I've seen a lot of heavy duty trucks that they start putting dates on these things. Why? One, one reason is you can tell exactly when you did this thing. I'm going to need to change this thing before the 10,000 miles that my oil is due. So I'm going to keep track of the date and the miles on this thing so I'll know when to change it out. This is a tow rig for me. It's kind of important that I keep everything fresh. Okay, this is underneath your truck, and here's the oil filter. Now, if you need an oil filter tool to get it off, this is what you're going to use. There are at least four different types of tools that you can use to take off your oil filter. There's some that are straps that are pretty handy that, uh, that adhere to the uneven oil filter that do just great. I wish I would have had one of those today, but I didn't. I used the one that I thought was just going to work from the get-go because the one I used today was probably the one of last resort and it did not work so then you bring in the last resort screwdriver and then you bring in the last 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 resort which is a uh, spike and but the spike worked. Whoa. And this is what can happen. Luckily, we've got this below it. That 5 8 socket, I've already broke it loose here and loosened it up. Make sure you keep moving the oil pan that you've got underneath. All right, I'm going to try to teach you something. When I got up underneath the truck to take off the oil filter, you saw that uh, 
it didn't quite come off right and it punctured a hole in it with the uh, oil filter removal tool. Mother of goodness. Make sure when you put on a filter that you put some oil on this rubber ring and the threads. If you don't, it can get caught. And look at the hole that I had to create in order to get it done. Screwdriver didn't work. None of the tools worked. I had to stick a I had to stick a concrete framer tool. This little stake here. All the way through this sucker. In order in order for me to be able to turn it make sure if, when you do this with a screwdriver or with something like this that it goes all the way through make sure there's not hardly any room underneath there for air so make sure you don't take a hammer and or a sledgehammer and slam this thing all the way through and it goes into your oil pan make sure be really careful just take it where it comes out the other side have to be that much but you know like this and then so you can start turning it this is a uh, micro guard I uh, I'm just thinking that the previous owner or where he had it done did not oil this lip or the or the uh, threads and I had a hell of a time hell of a time I didn't do a lot of I didn't film a lot of that because I was cussing too much and I didn't want to put that out on a video. It could have made a good blooper scene though. Okay, locate your oil cap. Take it off. And get you a funnel. And let's start putting some mobile one in this sucker. You got one of my favorite funnels. Now this is five quarts. Remember you need six for a V10. Funnels like this, they have that spot back there for the court to where you can put a court in there and just let it go. Because this, in the end, you lose less oil. So, I let it go. I'll come back in a few minutes. Make sure I get all that oil. Then right behind where it says V10 is your oil dipstick. I'll wipe it all off because I do not know what it says. I'll wipe it all off. Just put it back down in. Bring it back out. short a cord. Which I knew it was going to be. Stick again. You don't, want to, you don't want to get too much oil in here. Still a little short. You know, let that sit for a few, you know, let that sit for a minute till it gets all the way down there because I don't think I need any more and I don't want to overfill it. Okay, after you get done, make sure that you don't drip this all over the place. If it's dripping still, clean it out and put a rag inside of it so it doesn't collect dust, a lot of dust. And then make sure you clean it out every time before you use it. This thing. You don't want it dirty. It's hard to clean down in here once it's been dirty. 
You ever had these issues when you're changing your oil on your big V10? If you have, let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and commenting down below. And as always, if you're right or hard, don't put it away wet. Oil that lip. I will tell you this. If that oil filter had come off normally, this was a 10-minute job. So don't think that every time it's going to take this long. Appreciate everybody once again. Thank you.